Income tax 2023-2024. Maker's depreciation. How is the depreciation deduction figured? Part number four. Get ready and some coffee because the only thing certain in life is death in taxes. And the only thing certain about death is more taxes. Yeah, you thought you'd take the easy way out. Well, it's not going to work. Death just draws the government in like flies. Most of us in... First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it works for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and More, Tax Year 2023 which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship Schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. The Schedule C itself, basically an income statement, having business income minus business expenses, which you can call business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income, which rolls in from the Schedule C to line one of the income tax formula. This formula outlining the calculation for the Form 1040, this being the first page of the Form 1040, Schedule C ultimately rolling into line eight. Additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income. Part 1, additional income. Schedule C, rolling into line 3. Income or business income or loss. This is the profit or loss from business. Schedule C, having an income statement format or P&L, profit and loss format, where we have income minus the expenses. We're looking at the expenses here, which usually have the most different kinds of categories some expenses being more difficult than others such as depreciation expense because as we've seen in prior presentations even if using a cash based system the tax code sometimes forces us to do an accrual thing such as when we buy property plant and equipment not expensing it as equipment expense for example but putting it on the books as an asset which is difficult because all we have is a profit and loss or income statement, not a balance sheet. So we can use depreciation schedules to record the balance sheet asset account of depreciation and its contra asset account accumulated depreciation and calculate the depreciation expense for the current year. And the depreciation calculation is basically borrowed from generally accepted accounting principles so it makes sense from that standpoint however the tax code often then adjusts the general accounting concepts for its own purposes and the makers part of the depreciation process which is what we're looking at here is basically the heart that's borrowed from, in essence, accounting principles, accrual accounting. And then they added to it things like the 179 deduction and special depreciations. Therefore, we would expect those things to change more over time, whereas the heart of the concept, maker's depreciation, will remain somewhat the same, you would think. 
First, a quick recap of the depreciation process. Let's imagine that we're purchasing a $10,000 piece of equipment. What we would like to do is just expense it in the year of purchase because number one, that's the easiest thing to do. Number two, that would allow us the biggest amount of deduction as soon as possible. However, the tax code most likely not allowing us to do that, but rather forcing us to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it over its useful life. However, the tax code might allow us to depreciate most, if not all of it up front with the help and use of a 179 deduction or special depreciation, meaning that we could end up in the same point as though we were on a cash basis, but instead of just expensing as equipment expense, we have depreciation expense because of the 179 deduction still possibly at the $10,000, leading to the question of why didn't you just let me be on a cash based system Part of the rationale for that is that the tax code is, of course, fluctuating between generally accepted accounting principles and doing whatever the tax code wants to do because of lobbying politics and you know stimulating the economy or whatever other rationale is coming up for that. So anything that isn't going to be subject to the 179 or special or any basis that is still left over will then be depreciated according to basically normal accounting principles. Uh, over the useful life. The things we need to know to depreciate it then are going to be what's going to be the, the type of property, which will help give us the life of the property that we're going to depreciate over. Obviously, we know the, need to know the cost of the property. We need to know the convention, such as in the year of purchase, are we going to assume we purchased it in the middle of the year, the middle of the month, the middle of the quarter, and then what's going to be the method that will be used makers typically using double declining method uh, or possibly a straight line method okay now we want to take a look at figuring the deduction for a uh, short tax year now when we're thinking about a short tax year this is different than like the convention when we're thinking about the convention we're thinking if i purchased a piece of equipment when do I assume I purchased it within the year? Usually it's going to be in the middle of the year, half year convention, or the middle of the month, mid month convention, or possibly the middle of the quarter. But you could end up in a situation where your, your tax return isn't for an entire year you, because possibly you started your business like in the middle of the year. So now we have a short tax year that we have to deal with. And that's going to have an impact on, you know, the depreciation calculations, which are usually over a full year or using some kind of convention uh, when you, in the year of purchase and the year of disposal or sale. So you cannot use the maker's depreciation tables to determine depreciation for a short tax year. A short tax year is any tax year with less than 12 full months. So for whatever reason, possibly it's the, it's the first year or something like that, and we don't have a full 12 month period, which messes up our depreciation calculations. So this section discusses the rules for determining the depreciation deduction for property you placed in service or dispose of in a short tax year. It also discusses the rules for determining depreciation when you have a short uh, tax year during recovery period other than the year the property is placed in service or disposed of. For more information on figuring depreciation for a short tax year, you can see Revenue Procedure 89-15-1987-1CB816. Using the applicable convention uh, in a short tax year. The applicable convention establishes the date property is treated as placed in service and disposed of. So when looking at conventions such as the half year convention, mid month convention, those take effect on the year of purchase, of course, and the year of uh, disposal. Depreciation is allowable only for that part of the tax year the property is treated as in service. So the recovery period begins on the placed in service date determined by applying the convention. The remaining recovery period at the beginning of the next tax year is the full recovery period less the part for which depreciation was allowable in the first tax year. So the following discussions explain how to use the applicable convention in a short tax year. Okay, so here we have the mid-month convention. Under the mid-month convention, you always treat your property as placed in service or disposed of on the midpoint of the month 
it is placed in service or disposed of. So as we have seen in prior presentations, mid-month convention often applying to say real estate, whereas most other types of equipment, for example, where we have three, five or seven year property usually has that half year convention uh, unless it's purchased at the end of the year, in which case you, you might end up with the uh, mid quarter convention. So you apply this rule without regard uh, to your tax year. So then we have the half year convention. Under the half year convention, you treat property as placed in service or disposed of on the midpoint of the tax year, it is placed in service or disposed of. So that's the easiest convention. And you could see again, why they might want to default to a half year convention, which is typically done for most kinds of equipment property for small businesses, three, five, seven year property for uh, example, because it's the easiest assumption to make and calculate and make tables on basically usually. So first or last day of month. So for a short tax year beginning on the first day of a month or ending on the last day of a month, the tax year consists of the number of months in the tax year. So if the short tax year includes part of a month, you generally include the full month in the number of months in the tax year. So when we're trying to determine a tax year that has less than 12 months in it, when we have a partial month, then we're kind of uh, including the month is the general idea. So if the short year includes part of a month, you generally include the full month in the number of months in the year. So you determine the midpoint of the year by dividing the number of months in the year by two. So if we have a half year convention, but we don't have 12 months in the year. So we're not assuming it was purchased in the middle of the year because maybe we started the business that year and we, it wasn't in, we weren't in business for the full year or something like that, or we closed the business uh, and therefore we don't have a full year. So we don't have 12 months. Well, obviously the midpoint then could simply be uh, the midpoint of the number of months that we have, right? That would be the general idea. So for the half year convention, you treat property as placed in service or disposed of on either the first day or the midpoint of a month. So for example, a short tax year that begins on June 20th and ends on December uh, 31st. So now you have a situation where possibly the the business was started on June 20th, right? So then it went through the end of the year, December 31st. It consists of seven months, even though it only had 20 days in that first month. So you, uh, you use only full months for this determination. That simplifies the calculation, just like the physicist that assumes to make a chicken coop while the chickens are round chickens, right? That's how you do it. So you treat the tax year as beginning on June 1st, instead of June 20th. So we took the full month, uh, uh, rounding it back to June 1st, rather than up to the next year. So we took the full month included in our calculation. So the midpoint of the tax year is the middle of September. So that's 31 divided by two uh, months uh, from the beginning of the tax year. You treat property as placed in service or disposed of on this midpoint. Okay, example. So Tara Corporation, a calendar year taxpayer, was incorporated on March 15th. For purposes of the half year convention, so it has a short tax year of 10 months ending December 31st, 2023. During the short tax year, Tara placed property in service for which it uses the half year convention. Tara treats this property as placed in service on the first day of the sixth month of the short tax year or August 1st, 2023, not on first or last day of month. So for a short tax year, not beginning on the first day of a month and not ending on the last day of a month, the tax year consists of the number of days in the tax year. You determine the midpoint of the tax year by dividing the number of days in the tax year by two. For the half year convention, you treat a property as placed in service or disposed of on either the first day or midpoint of a month. If the result of dividing the numbers of days in the tax year by two is not the first day or the midpoint of a month, you treat the property as placed in service or disposed of on the nearest preceding first day or midpoint of a month. Obviously the calculations get a little bit 
technical when we're trying to come up with these conventions and now we're having to adjust them for uh, for partial years. Clearly, if we properly input this into software, the software may be able to help us with these calculations, but we still want to have a general idea of them so we can determine whether or not the software is calculating uh, properly, right? So we should have kind of, if we have kind of an idea of, okay, wait, this is a partial year that is happening, and I know the conventions that are being used, and I know, and I know how, how the software should be treating basically a, a half year convention, we can, might be able to kind of deconstruct to make sure that our data input in something like the software is appropriate and the depreciation schedules look correct, right? So mid quarter convention, remember that when we're looking at the three, five, seven year property, oftentimes it defaults then to a half year convention, which is more beneficial typically, but if we purchase a lot of stuff in the end of the year, the IRS might force us into a mid quarter convention so which would be less favorable but we might have to do that so now we have this mid-quarter convention so uh, to determine if you must use a mid-quarter convention compare the basis of property you placed in service in the last three months of your tax year to that of property you placed in service during the full tax year the length of your tax year does not matter if you have a short tax year of three months or less, use the mid-quarter convention for all applicable property you placed in service during that tax year. So the, the calculation to determine whether or not I have to switch from a half year to a mid-quarter is dependent upon whether or not I purchased a lot of the stuff in the last quarter. But if I only have a partial year, you might ask, well, wait a second. Now I now the question is, how am I going to do that calculation? Because there's not 12 months in it. And they're still going to basically say, we're going to take the last three months compared to uh, the full year. So, so you treat property under the mid-quarter convention as placed in service or disposed of on the midpoint of the quarter of the tax year in which it is placed in service or disposed of divide a short tax year into four quarters and determine the midpoint uh, of each quarter. For, for a short tax year of four or eight full calendar months, determine quarters on the basis of whole months. The midpoint of each quarter is either the first day or the midpoint of a month. Treat property as placed in service or disposed of on, on this midpoint. So determine the midpoint of a quarter for a short tax year or other than four or eight full calendar months. Complete the following steps. Determine the number of days in your short tax year. Deter so now we're defaulting from months to days now. Determine the number of days in each quarter by dividing the number of days uh, in your short tax year by four. Determine the midpoint of each quarter by dividing the number of days in each quarter by two. So if the result is uh, of three gives you the midpoint of a quarter that is on uh, uh, a day other than the first day or midpoint of a month, treat the property as placed in service or disposed of on the nearest preceding first day or midpoint of that month. Example, please, example. Uh, Tara Corporation, a calendar year taxpayer, was incorporated and began business on March 15th. So it has a short tax year of uh, 91 over 2, 91 over 2, ending uh, on December 31st. Ending on December 31st, during December, it placed property in service for which it must use the mid-quarter convention. So now it's forced to use the mid-quarter convention. Uh, so this is a short tax year of other than four or eight full calendar months. So it must determine the midpoint of each quarter. So first, it determines that its short tax year beginning March 15th and ending December 31st consists of 292 days. So now we're breaking it down into the number of days rather than uh, the number of months. Next, it divides 292 by four to determine the length of each quarter. So we're getting into the quarters. How do we get to quarters? We're gonna take the, the days in the year this time instead of the months in the year and divide it by four. So we have 73 days. So finally, it divides 73 by two to determine the midpoint of each quarter. 
So the 37th day is going to be the midpoint of each quarter. So the following table shows the quarters of Tara Corporation's short tax year, the midpoint of each quarter, and the date in each quarter that Tara must treat its property as placed in service. So quarter 315, uh, 526, the midpoint on uh, 420, placed in service. So it kind of rounded, right? 420, it's going to say it's placed in service on 415, right? So here's the quarter. The midpoint is on 7-2. So then it brought it back to 7-1 because we're always in the midpoint or the beginning of the month. So this one's on 9-13. So we brought it back to 9-1. And this one, 11-25. And it brought it back to 11-15. Uh, okay. So the last quarter of the short tax year begins on October 20th. Uh, which is 73 days from December 31st and end of the tax year. The 37th day of the last quarter is November 25th, which is the midpoint of the quarter. November 25th is not the first day of the midpoint of November, so Sotara Corporation must treat the property as placed in service in the middle of November, the nearest preceding first day or midpoint of that month. So property placed in service in a short tax year. To figure your maker's depreciation deduction for the short tax year, you must first determine the depreciation for a full tax year. You do this by multiplying your basis in the property by the applicable depreciation rate. So that's going to be the normal process for makers as though it was for a full year. Then determine the depreciation for the short tax year. So then we have to make an adjustment because for the for the short tax year calculation. So do this by multiplying the depreciation for a full tax year by a fraction. The numerator top number of the fraction is the number of months, including parts of a month. The property is treated as in service during the tax year, applying the applicable convention. The denominator bottom number is 12, 12 months. See depreciation after short tax year later for information on how to figure depreciation in later years. All right, let's look at an example. Tara Corporation. Uh, here we go with Tara again. It's a short tax year beginning March 15th and ending December 31st, placed in service on March 16th. Uh, an item of five-year property with a basis of $1,000. This is the only property the corporation placed in service during the short tax year. Tara does not elect to claim the 179 deduction, so we're removing that from our complication of the calculation, and the property does not qualify for special depreciation, so we remove that. The depreciation method for this property is 200% declining balance, basically double declining. The depreciation rate is 40%, and Tara applies the half-year convention. So half-year convention, typical convention for uh, that type of property. So Tara treats the property as placed in service on August 1st. The determination of this August 1st date is explained under the example illustrating the half-year convention under using the applicable convention. So now we have to take into account that it's the half-year convention, but it's a short year, right? So now we're taking the middle of the half, the part of the year that we're dealing with that we looked back in the half-year convention. So Tara is allowed five months of depreciation for the short tax year that consists of uh, 10 months. So, so the short tax year is 10 months. So we get the half-year convention, you would assume, gives us five months of depreciation. The corporation first multiplies the basis, uh, 1,000 by... 40% declining balance to get the depreciation for the full year. So the full year depreciation would be 400. The corporation then multiplies 400 by 5 over 12, meaning because it was a short tax year, right? We, had ten, we only had 10 months in the tax year. And so the, we only have five months would be half of that. And now we're taking those five months divided by 12, because this depreciation calculation is based on 12 months periods and we're only going to get five out of the 12 month calculation. So that's going to give us the short tax year depreciation of 167. Again, hopefully software can help us out with these calculations. Okay. We've got like a psychedelic theme here because I think this problem has made me lose my mind. Anyways, example two, mid quarter convention. 
Tara, once again, corporation with a short tax year beginning March 15th and ending December 31st, placed in service on October 16th, an item of five-year property with a basis of $1,000. Tara does not elect to claim a Section 179 deduction. The property does not qualify for the special depreciation. So we're eliminating those from our problem. The depreciation method for this property is 200% declining balance. The depreciation rate is 40%. The corporation must apply a mid-quarter convention. So now we couldn't do the, the half year. Now we're going to have to do the mid-quarter because we purchased it basically at the end of the year. So because the property was the only item placed in service uh, that year, and it was placed in service in the last three months of the year. So that means that obviously it's going to qualify it to have to take the mid-quarter convention. Tara treats the property as placed in service on September 1st. This date is shown in the table provided by the example illustrating the mid-quarter convention under using the applicable convention in a short tax year earlier for property that Tara Corporation placed in service during the quarter that begins on August 8th and ends on October 19th. Under makers, Tara is allowed four months of depreciation for the short tax year that consists of 10 months. So we had a, the, now the short tax year only has 10 months in it, and we determined using the tables for the mid-quarter convention, four months of depreciation is allowed. So the corporation first multiplies the basis, so that the cost of the property was 1000 by 40%, which is the double declining rate in essence, to get the depreciation for a full tax year of 400. The corporation then multiplies 400 by 4 twelfths because we determined using the mid-quarter convention of the short tax year of 10 that we we're going to allow four and then four out of 12 because there's 12 months in the full tax year, which is what this double declining rate is based on to get the short tax year depreciation of 133. Property placed in service before a, a short tax year. So if you have a short tax year after the tax year in which you began depreciating property, you must change the way you figure depreciation for that property. If you were using the percentage tables, you can no longer use them. You must figure depreciation for the short tax year and each later tax year as explained next. Depreciation after a short tax year. So you can use either of the following methods to figure the depreciation for years after a short tax year. You have the simplified method and the allocation method. So you must use uh, the method you choose consistently, of course, because consistency is a, uh, a standard accounting concepts. And so obviously that makes sense. So using the simplified method for a 12 month year. So under the simplified method, you figure depreciation for a later 12 month year in the recovery period by multiplying the adjusted basis of your property at the beginning of the year by the applicable depreciation rate. So now we're going kind of to normal, uh, normal depreciation calculations rather than using the tables because the table method kind of got messed up because we had to do this partial year, which is messing up the whole life of the property in essence. Let's look at an example. So assume that the same facts as example one under property placed in service in a short tax year earlier. So the Tara Corporation claimed depreciation of $167 for its short tax year. So the adjusted basis of January 1st of the next uh, year is 833, meaning we had $1,000 minus the depreciation in year one gives us basically the book value or adjusted basis of 833. Tara's depreciation for that uh, next year is 40%, meaning we're just going to take that times the 40% uh, or $333. So using the simplified method for a short tax year. So if a later tax year in the recovery period is a short tax year, you figure depreciation for that year by multiplying the adjusted basis of the property at the beginning of the tax year by the applicable depreciation rate and then by a fraction. So the fractions numerator is the number of months, including parts of a month, in the tax year. Its denominator is 12. 
using the simplified method for an earlier disposition. So if you dispose of property in a later tax year before the end of the recovery period, determine the depreciation for the year of disposition by multiplying the adjusted basis of the property at the beginning of the tax year by the applicable depreciation rate and then multiplying the result by a fraction. So we, we're going to have the, the, the partial year situation at the beginning will also have an impact when we sell or dispose of the property possibly and the final year of depreciation calculation. So the, fra the fractions numerator is the number of months, including parts of a month. The property is treated as in service during the tax year, applying the applicable convention. Its denominator is 12 for 12 months, of course. Using the allocation method for a 12 month or short tax year. So under the allocation method, you figure the depreciation for each later tax year by allocating to that year the depreciation attributable to the parts of the recovery years that fall within that year. So whether your tax year is a 12 month or short tax year, you figure the depreciation by determining which recovery years uh, are included in that year. So for each recovery year included, multiply the depreciation attributable to that recovery year by a fraction. The fraction's numerator is the number of months, including parts of a month, that are included in both the tax year and the recovery year. Its denominator is 12 for 12 months. The allocable depreciation for the tax year is the sum of the depreciation figured for each recovery year. Let's look at an example. Assume that the same facts as example one, under property placed in service in a short tax year earlier. Taurus Corporation, first tax year after the short tax year is a full year of 12 months, beginning January 1st and ending December 31st. So the first recovery year uh, for, a, for the five-year property placed in service during the short tax year extends from August 1st to uh, July 31st. Tara deducted five months of the first recovery year on its short tax return. So, so now we're on the second year after having done that short period in the first year. So seven months of the first recovery year and five months of the second recovery year fall within the next year. So the depreciation for the next year is 333, which is the sum of the following. 233, the depreciation for the first recovery year, uh, 400 times 7 over 12, and then 100, the depreciation for the second recovery year. This is figured by multiplying the adjusted basis of 600, which is 1,000 minus the 400, by the 40%, the double declining rate, then multiplying the 240 result by 5 twelfths. Okay, using the allocation method for an earlier disposition. If you dispose of property before the end of the recovery period in a later tax year, determine the depreciation for the year of disposition by multiplying the depreciation figured for each recovery year or part of recovery year included in the tax year by a fraction. So now we sold the property, so we have to figure out the depreciation for the year and then reduce it by a fraction, you would think, of the year that would be in alignment with the time that we held the property before we actually sold it in that year. So the number of the fraction is the, is the number of months, including parts of months. The property is treated as in service in the tax year, applying the applicable convention. The denominator is 12. So if there is more, uh, more than one recovery year in the tax year, you add together the depreciation for each recovery year.